A warm welcome to all of you who have chosen to tune in today. The focus of this short reflection is on a passage from the Gospel according to Mark for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As follows, as Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him and asked him, <clears throat> Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed in my youth. Jesus, looking at him, <clears throat> loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. For several weeks now, <clears throat> Jesus has been teaching his disciples. He continues teaching them in this gospel passage from Mark, beginning with the question of the young man. And the young man's question, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now this young man asked the right person the right question. And Jesus responds by saying, <clears throat> why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man's response that he observed all of these commandments from his youth showed his love for God at a basic level. This is commendable, but Jesus called him to go to a higher level of response when he said, you are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. This answer of Jesus was totally unexpected by the young man. His face fell because he was probably expecting a pat on the back from Jesus. He didn't get that though. And so because he had many possessions that he wanted to keep, he went away sad. He wasn't ready to go to a higher level of total gift of self with complete abandonment to the will of God. Not many people are willing to do that, especially on short notice. Jesus then continued his teaching as he looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. This was an important statement, emphasized, the importance is emphasized because Jesus again said to his disciples, Children, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, having many possessions and wealth is not a problem in and by itself. It is a problem, though, when the focus of our possessions and wealth keeps us locked in ourselves and distracts us from turning to the kingdom of God. While reflecting on this gospel, one of the first thoughts that came to my mind was from a book that I read over 25 years ago. The book was entitled The Ladder of the Beatitudes. And it's right here, The Ladder of the Beatitudes. The line in this book that really got my attention, there was one line, and this that is the following. It said, when you die, you carry in your clutched hand only those things you've given away. When I first read that, I was stunned, stopped. It just the wisdom in there just grabbed a hold of me. And then I started thinking, what have I given away? And what would happen if, when I died, what would be in my hands? And I've never forgotten that, that thought. I've repeated it a number of times and I've included it in a number of, of homilies over the years. And I think it's a very, it's a simple thought, but it's full of wisdom. And this thought calls us to stop, to think, and to question what we are doing with all the possessions that we have, the things that we desire to get. What are we doing with them and how do we use them for good? Because we all have different things, different opportunities, different ideas about how to do good and help others. And whether we have many possessions or only a few possessions, whether we are rich or poor in material things, what matters is the choices we make to use those possessions and things to help us stay turned toward the kingdom of God. And without getting into a lot of specifics and because I like the wisdom and simplicity of that statement, when you die, you carry in your clutched hand only what you gave away, I want to suggest that we find a quiet place. Take a break. See what comes to mind. Think about it. Pray about it. And then ask ourselves how to apply it in our lives. So that when we die, we do not go out to meet the Lord with empty hands, but with arms full of all that we have given away. May God bless our efforts and bless us as we continue on our journey.